All right, so we've got this set K, which consists of zeros and all numbers 1 over N. So a half, a third, well, 1, a half, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and so on and so forth. Uh, we've talked about the set of 1 over N before. All of these numbers, these fractions are getting smaller and smaller, and they converge towards zero. And this set K also contains the point zero. So basically, just in a few words, what the, the, the bulk of this proof is, is that, okay, so we want to prove that K is compact from definition. So we want to prove that every, every, op every, every open cover has a finite subcover. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take this open cover, and if you have an open cover, then this open cover covers all of the points in K. In particular, it covers the point zero. And so there is some open set which contains zero. Which means, and since it's an open set, obviously it contains some open interval. So there's zero is contained in some open interval, which is contained in this open set, which is one of the sets in our subcover, or in our, in our open cover. So this open interval surrounding zero will contain infinitely many elements of K because it will be in neighborhood of zero and all of these things of the form one over N converge to zero. So infinitely many of those things will be contained in this open interval and then you've only got finitely many um, points of K remaining and so you could just deal with those with finitely many other of the open sets and that that way you got your finite subcover. So that's it. Um, so now let's put that into words. So let fancy you, um, we'll call this U alpha, be an open cover of K. Uh, we need to find a finite subcover. Since zero is contained in K, um, there exists some, we'll call it UJ, and U, which contains the point zero. Now, since UJ is open, which is obvious because of the fact that's contained in the open cover. Um, there is an open interval or neighborhood of some point. Um, we'll call it AB such that zero is contained in this open neighborhood or yeah, open interval, which is contained, which is a subset of the open set UJ. Okay. Um, this implies that the right endpoint B must be strictly greater than zero, because otherwise zero could not be contained in this interval. Um, so then there is some natural number capital N such that um, B is between 1 over N and 1 over N plus 1. Um, and then we need an equal to, and let's see here, if, if B is equal to something of the form 1 over N, then that is something that still needs, that is not covered by the open interval A comma B, and so it will need to be covered. Okay, so we put this. Okay, so for K, um, is that what I want to use? Sure, for K, between one and capital N, um, one over K is in capital K, and so there exists some U, and I'll say N K, such that, well, let's call it U alpha K, because I don't know what kind of indexing we're doing for uh, fancy you. Fancy you could be like uncountable, in which case you can't like these alphas don't belong to the integers. They might need to 
belong to a set of higher cardinality. And so just to be safe, for each k, I'm just going to call it alpha k. There is some u alpha k in fancy u such that 1 over k is contained in this u alpha k. Okay? So for every single point p in our set k, either p equals 0 or p equals 1 over k, where k is some natural number, lowercase k here. Um, okay, so if p equals 0 or if k is greater than capital N, then in both of these cases, p is contained in u j. And if neither of these two scenarios are true, then um, p equals 1 over k, where k is less than or equal to n. And in this case, we have p being an element of u, this should not be fancy u, so u alpha k. Thus, u j, and then u alpha 1 through u alpha capital N, uh, capital N is a finite subcover. And so, given any arbitrary open cover of K, we have found a finite subcover, and hence K is compact. And there we go. We've completed the proof because we've just done the standard open, open cover, finite subcover type argument. And yeah, these things, these are very important types of arguments when you're dealing with compactness. It's important to be comfortable with doing these types of arguments. And even without using Heine Burrell, because you won't, especially in analysis, if you study things like functional analysis, you're likely to deal with topologies which are too general for Heine Burrell to apply and so you need to be comfortable doing compactness arguments just using the open um, arbitrary open cover finite subcover type argument and so these exercises are really um, good for giving you practice for those types of arguments. And I also think that most of these types of proofs are pretty nice. I don't know, there's something about them that I sort of like. Um, particularly here, like throughout, I haven't drawn anything, but throughout this entire exercise, I've had like a number line pictured in my head. Um, and I've had zero on there, and I've got all the numbers one over n, and I picture, oh, you got this uj, which is plopped right on top of u zero, and there's like infinitely many things in he in there, and then you've, you've got a few straggling dots that you just cover. Um, so yeah, not all of these um, compactness arguments are as visual as this one, but it's nice when they are. Um, but in any case, we're done. This completes the proof.